these are some of the donations that we've been uh, we've received and so what we do with these donations we make them up into small goodie bags for our outreach sessions and um, we tend to put things like face wipes toothbrushes toothpaste and um, any toiletries we've got in these we have a car filled full of toiletries condoms clothing hot drinks biscuits, crisps, that kind of thing. Because sometimes we've gone out and the weather is absolutely horrible um, and it just gives the women a little bit of respite to jump in the back of the car with us, have a cup of tea, get warm for a bit, have a chat to us for a little while and see how they're doing. Um, we also, in the car, we'll have a quick chat about what's going on for them, try and book one-to-one -one sessions in if they're up for it. Um, also make sure they know about all the other stuff we do in terms of our droppings. We were able, with the funding from the lottery, be able to purchase that red vehicle, which has been huge, um, because a lot of the work previously was done on foot in some of the in the red light areas. Um, and with having the outreach vehicle, we've seen a massive increase in the amount of reach we've got for the women that are engaging with our services now. Um, I think we've pretty much doubled, if not tripled, the amount of contacts we're making with women on a weekly basis. A lot of women engaged in our project, Iris, um, have had abuse from a young age as well as throughout their adult lives, have been in and out of the criminal justice system. A lot of them are street homeless or sofa surfing and have struggled to keep tenancies, face domestic violence and domestic abuse. And also a lot of the women we work with have got substance misuse issues and alcohol dependencies. The biggest challenge is about building relationships up with the women that we're meeting on our outreach work. That's me to hang on, if we just might just need to hang on for, for a little while. The women don't trust very easily because they've been victims of a lot of abuse throughout their lives. Um, and so it's about building that initial relationships up with these women so they engage in the process. So we're heading to one of the, um, uh, one of the areas in uh, Wolverhampton where there is a red light area. We are looking to engage with women who are street sex working at that time. So we might pull over to the side of the road, get out of the vehicle and talk to them. Sometimes we talk to them through the, through the window of the car. Um, just checking their well-being is normally the first point of call. Um, just seeing how they're doing that night, how they're feeling, if they want a hot drink, um, if they want to get some condoms from us, um, if there's been any um, dodgy punters or anyone that's um, threatened with any violence or crime while they've been out working. Oh yeah, you were right. Yeah. Do you need any condoms or anything? See if there's any support we can give them immediately while we with when we see them on the night. Are these about to any of us before? You have. Yeah, yeah but also let them know about our okay. services that we do, including the one-to-one -one support. Looks like she's been picked up by a punter. How many people are in that car? There's more than one in there. Yeah. It's a bit dodgy, that is. Mark down the car, was it a, was that BMW Mercedes? What BMW? Yeah. We'll have to, um, we're back out tomorrow night, so we'll come out and come back round here and see if we can see her. Yeah. Just check in with her, make sure she's all right.